Hello and welcome to this Minecraft tutorial on Spawners in Bedrock Edition. Now this is specifically for Spawners in the Bedrock Edition of the game because they actually have a few different mechanics which I didn't know about. Somebody was asking about what is the spawning range, what is this, that and the other for Bedrock Spawners and I didn't know so I actually went off and tested it and it got some interesting results. So I thought I would share those results with you guys. Now a lot of the basics are exactly the same. You've got six different types of spawners down here. You've got the skeleton, you've got the zombie, you've got the two different types of spider and then you've got the silverfish and the blaze. Now the light levels for the blaze and the silverfish are basically irrelevant. They're going to spawn at almost any light level. Whereas the rest of them, they were only going to spawn at like level 7 or more. Just like a normal spawn. So as you can see, the sea lanterns have actually stopped the spawns there. So yeah, that is the real basics that are exactly the same. Now let's get on to a couple of things that ever so slightly different. Okay, so as some of you might be able to tell, I've turned the light levels right down by setting it to midnight and giving myself some night vision so that we can actually record this in some ideal conditions. Now, I've used a cave spider spawner here because they've got the smallest hitbox and they will basically spawn in every single space of the spawnable area. Now, the main thing, the main difference is with Bedrock Edition, you've got a slightly different shape and size of spawnable area. So if I just mark this out, one, two, three, four and one two three four one two three four and what i'll do is i'll speed this up a little bit so that you can hopefully see exactly what's going on and we should see the spawns just completely stop once i filled this in Right, and there we go. So this is the actual spawnable area on Bedrock Edition. Now I've ran this test over several hours to, just to see if this is absolutely correct. But what I got was once I filled in all of these blocks, I got absolutely zero spawns. Now what this is, is sort of three high based on the center position of the spawner right there. And it's nine across, again, centered on the spawner position. And then you've got this sort of diagonal kind of line going across here. So it is very, very different to the Java edition. Now, just to prove this, and I'm hoping one's going to spawn in reasonably quickly. There we go. Right. That took absolutely no time at all. <laughs> no tricks of editing. That guy just came straight in here. So let's get rid of him. There we go. And then we fill that back up and we should stop the spawns. Let's just try a different location. Give it a few seconds and I should maybe get a spawn pretty quickly. But basically, all of these blocks are places where the mobs can spawn within on a spawn on Bedrock Edition, which is really different. On Java Edition, it is a much larger area. Now, the upshot of this is that you can actually just place one torch. Let's grab a torch or a lantern. Any light source, you can place one. <laughs> oh, he's just here to take the mickey. Right, so you can actually just place a light source directly on top of the spawner. And that is going to light up all of these spaces enough to make sure that nothing spawns. Now, like I mentioned a few moments ago um, over there, the blaze generally ignore light levels. They don't care about light levels that much. They are jerks. They'll spawn at pretty much any light level. So the only way to stop a blaze spawner from spawning really is to more or less fill in the entire block here and hope for the best. These blocks here actually just represent the foot block for the mobs. So taller mobs like zombies down there, which we've now got in this one, if they can have their feet spawn in this block and they will spawn like this. I'll just take out a few of these blocks. See that? Straight away, it spawned and dropped straight down. So this is where its feet spawned and it dropped down from that point. So that's the important thing to remember, that these blocks represent where the feet are, not where the head is, because I can break a few of these blocks and I should get zombies spawning up on top here. And it's all to do with where the feet are going to land. Okay, moving on. Now that we know exactly where the mobs are going to spawn and how to block the spawns using the light levels, depending on the mob, of course, like say Blaze, just forget it, just fill in this entire block and you'll be fine, they won't spawn. Now that we know about that, we need to know how far we need to get them out of that area before they stop counting towards the spawner cap. Okay, now what I have found here is that it's approximately three beyond this. So if I go like this, 
it's three beyond it in every direction. So if I just mark these out, we'll get a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Right, and there we go, that is the area marked out. Now this is a 15 by 15 by 9, so it's 15 in those two directions and then 9 vertically, with the spawner right at the centre. Now the best way, if you want to replicate this test, is for example, I spawned in some spiders in this corner. Um, let's, let's do it like this. And that is just within the space. Three, four and then I'm going to put a cap on them to make sure that they stay exactly on that corner. Now, if I go back here and remove all of the light blocks and all of the glass, then we should not get any spawns, okay? Right, there we go. That is all of the glass removed. There is no light in this area, but we've got four mobs right here. Now, whilst I'm talking about it, I've placed four in there because that is the cap for the spawner. So if you've got four of that same mob in the same area, then it won't spawn, okay? So you see that I'm getting absolutely no spawns. It should be absolutely ready for this. And how do we test this again? What I can do is I can move these spiders out. And let's give them a little push. There we go, off you go. And let's just put that back and then just watch the spawner for a moment or two. I should start getting spawns again almost straight away. And there we go. So I've tested all of the corners of this area and I've tested within the area. And if you have four of that particular mob type in that area, then it will not spawn any more in there. If you had four zombies in there, it doesn't matter. It will try because it's only looking for the particular type of mob that's in the spawner. Okay, so one thing that's worth noting is I chose cave spiders for this particular test because they have a very small hitbox. So it's very easy to be very accurate about where the spawning box is. So I could be very clear and say, right, in that bottom corner there, if there's cave spiders in there, that counts towards the spawn cap of this spawner. And that is very handy to know. However, if this were a zombie spawner, let's go change this into a zombie spawner. And I had the feet of the zombie inside that area, but not the other part, then it still counts towards the cap. So if I place a zombie in there, let's go one, two, two, three, four. Now this should completely stop the spawns in that box. And that's mainly to do with just the fact that a entity is present within that spawning area. So it can be the head or it can be the feet. So if the head were down in this block, that would count towards the cap in that area. Okay. Okay, so the next thing that we want to know about is the activation range of this spawner. And as you'll see, when I talk about activation range, what I mean is when you come into range of it, it will go on and it will start thinking about trying to spawn. And then when you step out of range, it stops and so on and so forth. So basically what I've got set up over here is a little demonstration of what I believe to be correct. And I've tested it and I think is 100% true. So what we have here is we've got a 15 block range from the spawner. Now, what I think is actually happening here is we've got 16 blocks from the centre of the spawner going out and the centre of that spawner going out. So there's a little sweet spot between the two 15 block ranges where they can both activate. Now if I come over here and I'm going to stand there quite purposefully, I can see that that spawner is not on, but I can see that that spawner is. Now if I go to the other side over here, then we can see that that spawner is now on and that spawner isn't. Whereas if I actually find the little space right in the middle, then I get both of them on at the same time. So I think it's fair to say that this is a 16 block radius from the center of the spawner. And I know it's in a sphere because I've tested this already. So the, the real way to work this out or the best way to do it is to say that 15 blocks is the safe space for the spawner. So you can say 15 blocks from there and that is going to be this block which will definitely, definitely activate that spawner. Whereas that block, if you stand on the front half of it, will activate that spawner. And if you stand on the back half of this block, it won't activate that one. It's kind of complicated. So if you just think of it as 15 blocks away in a sphere. Now I'm going to go over and mark that out for you. So you get a little bit of an idea of the kind of shape of things that we're talking about here. And it's just going to be a rough sphere just to give you an idea. So let's do that. Okay, so hopefully this gives a little bit of an idea of the activation range. 
Now the ever so slightly interesting thing is it seems like the 16 blocks is counted from the bottom of the spawner. So this is actually offset in a downward position, which is kind of interesting. It's um, down by one. So anyway, let's have a quick look at this. Now we can show that this is working. If I just place a little block there, break that one. And the idea is that any part of the entity that's within this 15 blocks or any part of the player which is within these 15 blocks will activate the spawner. So if I stand down there, we can see it's turned on because my feet are in there. But if I just stand on that block, we see that it hasn't turned on. And then if I do the same down at the bottom, let's have a look. Now, if I go here and fly up, then you can see that I'm not actually activating the spawner. And then if I place something there and then just get my head into that block, it activates. So yeah, this is, um, I think, pretty accurate. So the main point with this is the activation range is spherical and it's around about 15 blocks radius from the bottom of the spawner. Now 15 blocks again is the safe spot. The best way, if you've got two spawners in range of each other, or you think are in range of each other, then you draw a rough line between them and you stand somewhere in the middle and see if they both activate. That's the best way to work out if you're in range of them. But this is going to give you an idea of possibilities. So taking all of those things into account, like the spawning area that we've got in the middle there, which is where all the mobs will spawn. And then we've got the sort of registration range of the spawner and then the activation range of the spawner, we can actually come up quite easily with a slightly different looking design to your mob spawner. So over here, we've got the drop shoot. I've got loads of extra sort of drop at the bottom here because mobs bounce up and down quite a lot in the water. And when their head is in the activation or in the registration range, then they get counted for that split second. So that could just pull down your rates a tiny fraction. So you want loads of extra drop there. Now I've got them pushing out over in this direction, going up a tube, and then they're going to do a 23 block drop. And that is from point to point. So basically, if this is the block that the feet land on, then this up here is the block that the feet set off from. So there's 23 blocks from here down to the point where they land, okay? And that leaves them on around about half a heart or one heart, it depends, they've got slight variance. So let's switch this light off because this light, like I said before, the lighting is really, really easy. We just need one light to deactivate that. They start spawning straight away. And what we'll do is we'll get a couple of them going up and you should see them when they're around about this area, when they're at the same level as the spawner. They, you should be getting more spawns, basically. This is not blocking the spawns in there. And that's the main point. Now, why do a mob spawner like this and not just do it in a standard Java edition kind of way? Well, you're actually doing a lot more digging for that because the Java one is a full sort of square area. It's a nine by nine by three square. So you don't need to do any of these corners. You can save yourself all that work, save yourself all the hassle with all this and just get them nicely filtered into one spot. So we're not missing any opportunities with this. Down here, I've got a little baby zombie filterer. So the baby zombies get pushed along, they land on this magma block, they die. I don't care about their drops. I could care about their drops, but really this is for XP. You don't really need actual rotten flesh. Nobody uses rotten flesh for anything. It's, it's not even a good trade. So there we go. Okay, that is everything that I've got for you today on mob spawners. Now, I hope that you've learned something new in this episode. If you have, drop me a comment down below. It'd be really interesting to know what people didn't know about mob spawners, um, because I, I love learning from you guys. If you drop me a comment, I learn something. So I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, <laughs> drop me a like. And if you want to see some more, drop me a subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.